Thank you so much, and good morning on such a beautiful and delightful Sunday. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, The Light of God. Two, three, four. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for joining us this morning, whether you're here in the sanctuary or joining us on Facebook Live or on Zoom. We're certainly glad you're here. And for those of us that are here in the sanctuary, would you please remember to silence your cell phone so that we may enjoy this service undisturbed. So now let us just turn within and have a little prayer time together. So just gently letting go of all our cares and everything that's going on. Just time to get cozy with God and simply recognize the God, one power, one love, that unconditional love that manifests in each and every one of us, that love that is universal, that appreciation of life that lives and flows and expresses so beautifully and eloquently and uniquely in each and every one of us. I know we are all here by divine appointment, that we are here at, by our own free will, which is given to us by God, and we practice this holy time, this sacred time together, knowing that our day, our lives, and all those we come in contact with is in hand simply because we realize our oneness with God. And I know this service unfolds beautifully and completely, that we hear with our hearts, not so much with our ears, that the divine word is spoken by Dr. Mark as he has heard it from God. And we each embrace that message and interpret it and heal with it, that it meets our own divine needs. And what a blessing it is to be here, to live these teachings, because this is not a, a teaching that we just do on Sunday, that we live this throughout our lives. This is truly a philosophy and a way of living. And I bless everyone who's able to participate in this service today. I'm so grateful to Sam and Diane who are here with the musicians today. And I'm grateful for our support team here in the sanctuary and on Zoom and on Facebook. I'm very grateful to everyone who's tuned in, and whether you're here live or via the wonderful technology that we have at our service today. And I say thank you, God, for my being here, because I know, too, that my life is blessed. I know that prayer is always the answer, and God answers the prayer before the question is asked. And for this, I am very grateful. I know this is so, and I release this into the law of mine and simply say, Amen. Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. filling me with love and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Please rise and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead me not to temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in the congregational song by our very own Sam Krieger, God is the Love That I Am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am, and so it is. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am, and so it is. Every day and every way, I have everything that I need. When I say love is the way, I have every chance. Thank you. Please be seated, and we're going to join in meditation. We'll wait. It's going to be for five minutes, so just simply close your eyes. And you want to repeat your favorite mantra or something simple. God is the love that I am. I am the love that God is. God is the love that I am.
Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to have you here. I'm going to talk a little bit today about stating your good. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to remind us today is our last Sunday of our Journey of the Heart program. Our Journey of the Heart program, every year we um, ask people to think about the place the church has in your life um, and tell us what you're going to contribute in the year ahead. This allows us to kind of come up with a plan and we can figure out what we're going to do uh, as a community for our church. So in your uh, program, there is a pledge card. If you haven't filled one of these out, we ask you to take it home, prayerfully consider what you will contribute to the church. Um, Look, the church is no different than anybody else. We've struggled in the last couple of years. It's been very difficult for us, um, and we couldn't do it without your support. So I thank you so much. At whatever level you participate, we are grateful to have you here and that you support us. So now, on to what I'm going to talk about today. Seems to me, and I seem to have noticed this quite a bit, that people don't believe in a greater good. And I've really been able to see this in people's faces, in their expressions, in their eyes, uh, I will say especially during the last couple of years. If, um, so people don't believe that there is a greater good for them, or they have already decided for some reason they can't have it. If there is a greater good for me, that's, that's a wonderful thing, but, but I can't have it. Okay? So how often, um, I wonder about all of us, but I'm speaking specifically about myself right now, have I done that? When I wanted something, and then I thought about it, I got excited about it, and then I started this process of dismantling it. You know what I mean by dismantling it was I started talking myself out of it. I started to think about all the reasons why it couldn't happen and why it shouldn't happen and why I didn't need to have that in my life. See, all of life is seeking a greater good. All expressions of life. Emma Curtis Hopkins talks about how even the worm that we see in the dirt, the worm is moving toward a greater good. So Emma's teaching to us is that we are all moving toward a greater expression of life. We say this in church here all the time, that God within us is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. So we are to be sustained, Emma teaches us, by the science of God and not the science of matter. So the good which you and I want governs everything, she says. So think about that. The good that we want to experience in our life, it governs everything we do. Therefore, the good which you are seeking, stay with me here for just a second, the good that you are seeking is your God. This is what Emma says. My good is my God. So I'm seeking my good, therefore I'm seeking my God. My good is the greater expression of God I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm calling forth into my life. So what we have to do is state what our good is. Really, what is your good? See, look, your life can be filled with demonstrations, with healings, with miracles, with manifestations. I believe it's what we've actually signed up for if we are on a metaphysical spiritual path. I think this is it. So, so just like everyone has a different idea about God, we all have a different idea about what good is in our life. So good is a really, really powerful idea. And Emma asks us to keep this word in our consciousness all the time. Good, good. She says again and again, and I love this, this has had such an impact on me, there is good for me and I ought to have it. So think about that. If God has created good for you, oughtn't you have, oughtn't you to have what God has created for you? That's how I'm going to say that. Yeah, I, I believe we should. If God has gone to all the trouble to create something good for us, we should receive it. We should accept it. We should experience it. Right? So in our study, we have the absolute, the high spiritual truth, the God truth, and then there's the relative truth that we are working with here on the earth plane. Right? So today, I invite us all to tell the absolute truth about our good. The highest idea of good that we have for ourselves, for our life, that's what we have to tell the truth about. So I would ask you first today, what is your heart's desire? Remember, God has no judgment on any of it. 
So if your heart's desire is for a refrigerator, that's fantastic. And if your heart's desire is to you know, have an Oscar, that's fantastic also. God really has no judgment on it because to the mind that created all, there is no big or small, right? So God can handle a broken leg just as easily as God can handle a splinter. God can handle your fantastic career just as easily as God can handle your minimal career, right? So what is your heart's desire? Remember, one of the ways that God gives to us is that God gives to us through the realm of ideas. God puts a desire in our heart. You know, we get this little notion, this inkling of, ooh, that might be for me. That's something I'd like to experience. That's something I'd like to, to have uh, be part of my life. So scripture says if you know the truth, know the truth, know, like deeply know, embody, carry with you all the time the truth, and the truth will set you free. All right, so, all right, so we know the spiritual truth, and then we have to tell the spiritual truth, and that's when the truth will really set us free. So just knowing it, knowing it's good, but speaking it takes it a step further. See, because we cannot expand in life if we dummy down. You know what I mean? If I pretend the principles are, are just a nice idea, but not really something I can use to move my life forward, if I think the principles are just, well, those are nice, you know, those are nice, you know, nice, nice ideas, but they don't really make that much. No, no, no. We cannot expand our life if we dummy down how the spiritual principle operates. When we treat, when we pray in the affirmative, we have to speak the absolute truth and good in that moment, or our treatment is a lie. If we're not really saying what we're seeking to experience, whether it's a quality like greater peace of mind or fulfillment, you know, or forgiveness or the refrigerator, if we don't tell the truth about that, how can the universe possibly respond to us? You know, well, I'm going to ask for so much less than that and maybe the universe will give me a little more. No, it won't. That is not how it works. Really, it's not. Come back to this. God has no judgment on what you desire to experience and express in life. So I think we dumb down to avoid disappointment, to tell you the truth. You know, we tell ourselves, well, this is nice. This is nice, but I'm not, I'm not really looking for like a big healing. I'm not looking for big transformation in my life. I'm not looking to forgive everybody. You know, just those ones that really get under my skin. So take a moment with me right now. Really, do this with me right now. And think about what is my real ultimate good? What is it that drives me, that pushes me, that pulls me forward, that compels me? What is my ultimate good? Hmm. Now, you might just silently say that to yourself. My good is, my good is. And listen to yourself about what your good is. See, we can't just say metaphysical platitudes and have a life that we want. Well, it's all perfect. It's all in divine order. This must be God's will. Baloney. All of that. That's, I, th I think those are just the platitudes people say so they don't have to own what's happening in their own consciousness. Emma says, there is a good for me and I ought to have it. You know, I've, I've encountered that in, in this teaching 35, 40 years ago. And probably about 10 years ago, I started using those initials on everything. I'll write it on the back of envelopes. I'd write it on my check in the memo. I don't write the whole thing. There is, great, there is good for me and I ought to have it. That doesn't fit in the memo of my checks. And I don't write that many checks anymore anyway, but I have room for all of those initials, which always reminds me that when I'm writing a check that, yes, God intends great good for me, for you, for all of us. So this is a very powerful thing to say. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. And now we're going to say that a few times together, and Emma recommends we say it five times. So there is good for me, and I ought to have it. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. See, people don't like the word ought. That's what I've decided. People don't really like the word ought. But see, God can only work in truth. You have to tell the truth about what you want. 
You have to tell the truth about where. Look, you wouldn't go to an airport, assuming you could buy a ticket on the spot, and just get a ticket to like, you know, anywhere. You have to tell them where you want to go, right? To get to the absolute, we have to go through the relative. I think we all understand this. You know, we all have this conversation that's going on in our head, but what's the bigger spiritual truth? Because that's what's going to set us free. Ought, if you look up the word ought, one of the things you'll see with ought is obligation. So actually, we have an obligation that there is good for me, and I am obligated to have it. After all, God has gone through all the trouble, right? So if God has good for you, you ought to have it. It's a natural expectation and a logical consequence. There is good for me, and the logical consequence is I ought to have it. So Thomas Troward, one of our teachers, said that my mind is a center of divine operation that is always for expansion and a fuller expression. Think about that. Our mind is always trying to expand and express in a fuller and greater way. Ideas show up. So when the ideas show up, your job, my job, is to name that good. Name the good. If you start with, there is a greater good for me, or there is a good for me, and I ought to have it, if you just keep doing that, your heart will show you the rest. So how often are we in situations, I know for me, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I'll tell myself that over and over and over again. And then it occurs to me, ah, oh, there is a good for me, and I ought to have it. And so I'll just say that again and again and again, like we just did. And I know if I say that, my heart will show me what the next step is. See, I want the feeling when I name my good. You know, so if I say what my good is, I've got to get that feeling. Ernest Holmes teaches us that feeling is intelligently directed creation. So Emma wants us to have this as a constant way of thinking. This is, there's something very freeing about naming your good. You know, know the truth, the truth will set you free. So it, there's something really, really freeing about telling the truth about what your good is. I want you to practice this later today at some point. This is not something I have often asked people to do, but I want you to stand in front of a mirror at some point. It could be the mirror in your car. And look at yourself and name your good. Now, are you telling the absolute truth? How will you know? You smile. Mm -hmm. It's true. You cannot help but smile when you state your greater good. So if you say you're good and you don't smile, that ain't your good. It might be somebody else's good, maybe a neighbor's good. Maybe it was just, I don't know, circling around or something, and you just grabbed onto that. But when you speak the truth about what your good is, you smile. You just rise up. So again, Emma Curtis Hopkins teaches us that God cannot work in a lie. Truth heals, and it will set you free. So let me give you an example. So you could say, well, my good is my work. OK, nobody smiled on work, OK? <laughs> so I don't want to work. I want to give my gifts. I want to use my talents. I want to contribute my abilities and be well paid. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. Now that feels really good. Yeah. That feels a lot better than I want to work. Right? Work doesn't feel good, but, but if I tell the truth that I want to use my gifts, my talents, my abilities, and be well paid, well, yeah. Now, see, in telling that truth, that's something that the universe can respond to, right? The uni because God works in truth. When you say, oh, my good is my work, that's a lie. So you say what your good is in your mind, and my good is my God. See, truth is a healing principle, not a sickening principle, right? So if we expect good, if we see it coming, all right, so here's another one. So my support, and when Emma says support, she's talking about your abundant supply, all your needs met. My support is my good. My good is my God. Thus, God is my support. Emma likes the term free health. 
I think that means free from all error condition. So Emma says, my free health is my God. My God, I'm sorry, my free health is my good. My good is my God. Thus, my good is my free health. So, I invite you to turn your attention inward with me for a moment now. When we just become still together. Bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. Notice the in-breath and the out-breath. And know with me right here, right now, that there is a greater good for me and I ought to have it. I know for each and every one of us today that we are renewed, authorized, and cleansed by the authority of the presence of infinite loving spirit within us. I know for each and every one of us that our steps are ordered, guided, and blessed. As I say this for myself, I invite you to accept it for yourself. I am a worthy vessel. I am a willing vessel. I have been shaped and molded by God's love. I am available for God's love to be accomplished as me. I am equipped with the skill, the knowledge, and the ability to carry out the life assignments that God has given to me with love. I now go forth peacefully, joyfully, and lovingly. I am bestowed with an abundance of good things in all of my affairs and in every aspect of my world. And so knowing our oneness with God and our connection with each other, I just speak this word for all of those that we love and hold near and dear, family members, parents, children. We surround them with a mantle of God's peace and love and healing energy and know only good for them. For all of those situations in the world that are always pulling at our attention, we claim the perfect activity of God right at the core. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed today. Blessed with the awareness that there is a greater good for us. And we know what it is. So we now go forth with the blessed assurance that we shall never again forget that it is the spirit of the Father, Mother, God, the spirit of life within us that has anointed us. And for this and every good thing, we are so grateful. And with a full heart, I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. have little corpse on YouTube of the two of you carrying on during uh, COVID and stuff. It's, 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 our, oh, no, it's, it's G rated, but <laughs> they have uh, song and um, musical stuff. It's really cute. So if you need a little perk me up, that's a great way. And thank you, Diane Vincent and Sam and everyone for, 
And I'm sorry, yes, thank you. Lovely. I put my mask on, I'm a maskaholic, what can I tell you? So, we have lots of good things going on here at the church, and I know you want to know about making donations, and you can just simply call the office at 818-762-7566, or go to nhcrs.org slash give, or text the word give to 818 818- Four five seven three four one nine, and my two favorite holidays are coming up: Thanksgiving and Black Friday. <laughs> so, if you're going to be shopping, um, shop, and Cyber Monday is coming in a close third. So, uh, keep that in mind. If you're shopping, on, go to AmazonSmile.com, and you can select Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as the charity of your choice, and then a portion goes to the church, and it doesn't cost you anything. So that's another way of giving, and we really appreciate it. Prayer with a Practitioner will be available here in the sanctuary after service and also on Zoom. So if you're tuning in on Facebook, just hop over to Zoom if you'd like a prayer. Our Wednesday evening service this Wednesday is with Reverend Sydney. That's for November 17th. Meditation will begin at 6.50 p.m. and service at 7 p.m. Reverend Sydney's topic this week is speaking your word for the inner and outer peace. And Living a Course in Miracles is on Zoom. This group is facilitated by our lovely practitioner, Jeannie Laporte. It meets Thursday, November 18th from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. And if you're a regular um, for Course in Miracles or if you're just curious and want to drop in, you'd be very welcome. Our youth church is open on Sundays at 9.45 and children of all ages are welcome, youth of all ages. The Journey to the Heart 2022 campaign pledge forms are available at church and online. Our grief support group meets today with practitioner Carol Winninker on Zoom at 1 o'clock, and you can go to the church website for details on that. And our Christmas Giving Tree event is here once again. We are, um, help make the children's Christmas a joyful one. Once again, we have adopted the children and families at the North Valley Caring Services, and practitioner Gail Pelote is on the patio with her crew and her Zoom capability. So if you're on Zoom today, you can also um, sign up to do that and she'll pick a, a gift for you and distribute names and gifts and uh, find out the contact information on our website. The gifts need to be delivered unwrapped, please, with an appropriate size bag, gift bag, to church by November 28th and that's two weeks from today. And our gift distribution will be on December 9th and Gail can give you the details about that or you certainly can check again on the church website and guess what our bookstore is now open it'll be open for 30 minutes after the sunday service so please stop by and see what's new and maybe you just need to pick something up and find that magic word that's waiting for you to read it our virtual zoom patio is before and after sunday and wednesday evening services and our zoom meditation is every monday through saturday morning at 8 a.m and it's a lovely practice a great way to start your day and visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all the events and sign up for our weekly e-blast and monthly newsletters. So with that, let's all stand and sing the Here peace song. <laughs> Let this be my 
Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I, never be separate. I, live, in I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I, all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Yeah. Thank you.